Look, I'm not going to be telling you things that you already know, like read your textbook, treat your Sajara textbook like a story, do workbooks, do trial papers, and so on. Because if it was working, you wouldn't be watching this video. Hi everyone, my name is Faye and welcome to my channel. Stay till the end of the video to know how you can get a free PDF containing all these things. In this video, I will be explaining how to fully benefit from your textbooks in a way that makes sense, how to do notes if you have the time, the memorization technique to remember everything accurately, and where to find books and pass your papers to do. For more SPM study tips, feel free to click on the playlist here. And also remember to subscribe to my channel for more study tip videos and vlogs. Also, turn on your notifications and set it to all so that you do not miss out on future uploads. First, many of us are very used to just reading the textbook and then highlighting what's important, but that is actually not the best or most efficient way to study. So I'm going to show you how you can fully benefit from your textbook and if it's done right, you do not actually need to do extra notes. It is just six simple steps that will not only help cement information into your long-term memory, but also help make Sejara less overwhelming. The first step is to skim through a small section of a chapter you want to annotate. Do not write or highlight anything at this point, just try to understand what it is about so you can identify which parts are important. I find that Sajara chapters are often very long, so trying to read the entire chapter in one sitting tends to be very overwhelming and boring, and you don't absorb anything at the end. Step 2. Highlight the most important parts you want to remember. When highlighting, use different colors for different purposes. Generally, I use orange for definitions, pink for people or dates, and yellow for important events or important points that are not definitions, names, or dates. Step 3. Underline the explanations and examples. Do not highlight the examples because this will make your textbook look very messy. Then, bracket things that you don't feel are as important. When you're trying to study or memorize, prioritize the things that are underlined first, then only go on to the brackets. Step 4. Use memo pads and the empty spaces on the page to visualize and clearly separate the points. It is very difficult to revise, study, or even memorize anything that is jumbled up into one long paragraph. So don't be afraid to summarize everything onto a small piece of paper or a memo pad and just stick it right on top of the passage. For example, you can see here in Bab 8 that Rancangan Pembangunan 5 Tahun is separated into Tahap Pertama dan Tahap Kedua. It would be a complete nightmare to try and study or memorize everything in this one giant paragraph. So, I summarized everything on a piece of paper and just stuck it on top. I strongly suggest using cellophane tape and not glue so that you can safely remove your notes whenever you feel like you want to see the original text underneath. The last and most important step is to use a brightly colored pen to write questions on the empty spaces on your page. Make as many questions as you can from each page of the chapter. You'll be testing yourself using these questions when you're revising. I'll explain why this is so important later on in the video. A bonus tip, I like to separate each paragraph with thick lines just to make a long section less intimidating. If you're borrowing books from your school, I highly suggest buying one textbook. It's only 15 ringgit and it will make your life a whole lot easier. Now, you might be asking yourself, why are there so many steps? Why can't I just read and highlight? Well, you see, when you only read and highlight or maybe do some occasional underlining, you're doing something called passive studying. Passive studying creates an illusion that makes you think that you understand what you're reading, but you actually don't. And this is because when you keep reading something over and over again, the material becomes very familiar to you, and you tend to mistaken that as understanding the material when you actually don't. At the end of the day, 
Even though what you're studying is very familiar to you, it is not stored in your long-term memory. That is why you can spend hours upon hours studying sejarah, but yet you cannot answer any questions in your exam because it is not stored in your long-term memory. Therefore, you need to start practicing active studying. Active studying means that you're fully engaged when you're studying, not only mentally, but also physically. Now, when I say physically, I don't mean that you have to start running in order to learn about how our muscles work or you don't have to go to Kota E Famosa when you're trying to learn sejarah. What I mean is by reading, summarizing, and visualizing information, you're not only preventing boredom but also remaining alert and engaged when you're studying sejarah. These are active approaches to studying as shown here by a PDF by the Kansas University Medical Center. Self-testing is the secret weapon when it comes to memorizing anything. I'll explain more about that later. The free PDF will include a step-by-step -step guide on how you can fully use and benefit from your Sajara textbook and you can print it out to stick on your wall or your table so you can refer to it when you're studying Sajara. Now, if you have time, here is how you can do your notes. Write your notes as if they are answers to exam questions. What do I mean by this? Try to make as many questions as you can from your text. If you can't make a question, try to summarize the text into short points. That way, when you're studying, you're technically practicing how to answer essay questions and your points will be very organized. Let's look at my notes for Form 4, Chapter 4, Kemunculan Tamadun Islam dan Perkembangan di Islam. I'll read the textbook first. I then write all the notes in point form using a blue pen when writing keywords, names, places, dates, or important people. Next, how to memorize everything. I actually already have a video on how you can memorize anything easily and accurately and you can check it out here. But to go over it a little bit, basically remember all the questions that you wrote on your textbook or your notes? Compile all those questions and write them down on a piece of paper. These are your summary questions. Before each study session, you want to test yourself using these summary questions. If you don't know how to answer one question, you will only reread that part of the chapter. You are doing two things here. First, you are testing yourself if you really understand the material. And second, you are actively recalling information. Summary questions are especially helpful when studying sejarah because all the questions in your exam are from the textbook. So when you're revising, you're just basically answering exam questions over and over again. So during your actual sejarah exam, information will just flow faster and more easily because you study in the same way. And if you do the notes in the way that I suggested, where you write questions and then the answers in point form, you already have the structure of the essay down. Remember to watch my How to Memorize Anything video for more details. I will be including a summary questions template in the free PDF, so stay tuned till the end of the video to know how you can get them. And yes, it is a different design from the one that I featured in my How to Score 12 A's in SPM video. Next, let's talk about workbooks and exercise books. For me, after studying one chapter, I will try to test myself using objective questions from one or two workbooks. This is just to make sure that I understand everything and usually I will get like half of them wrong but it's okay, that's all part of the learning process. To be honest, I really feel like I didn't do enough Kertas Dua when preparing for SPM. Um, even though at the end of the day, I did score an A+, I really wished I had been more prepared. But because I already tested myself using summary questions before each study session, and those summary questions are essentially the same questions that they asked in the exam, I was already very prepared. But still, don't be like me, do more Kertas Dua. You can find a lot of trial papers, notes, and tuitions, webinars, and all of that from SPM study groups. I'm surprised a lot of you do not join them because they are very, very useful. Just search up SBM 2020 in Facebook and you're bound to find a lot of study groups there. I am also part of many of these groups so maybe you can see me there. So we finally come to the end of the video. Before I tell you how you can get the free PDF containing Sajara study tips, 
a summary questions template and a scan of one chapter of my Sujara notes. Please watch the advertisement that will play in a few seconds. The PDF is completely free, so please do not skip the ad to support my channel. Thank you for watching the ad. To get the free PDF, subscribe to my channel, like this video, comment down below if you like or dislike Sajara, and why. Then follow my Instagram. There will be a link in my bio that you can click on to fill in a Google form. I will email you the PDF in 5 days. The reason why it's taking so long and I can't immediately send you the PDF is because the PDF is actually quite tedious to make but I really wanted to get this video out first so that you can start implementing the revision techniques straight away. I'm also only scanning one chapter of my notes because my handwriting is quite ugly and horrible so I don't think anyone can read it but I just want you guys to see how I highlight, separate the points and so on. I can actually see if you're subscribed to my channel so please in order to ensure that I can continue making high quality and free content, please subscribe to my channel. For everyone that has made it this far, comment down below a yellow emoji. Thank you to everyone who has commented emojis on my last video and thank you also for 15,000 subscribers. I'll see you next week and bye bye